All right, Scott Knight here again. Meet the coach, meet the player. We welcome good friends, teammates as well. <laughs> coach Dan Gwyther, newly appointed assistant coach at Kings Point, U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Congratulations, Dan. I know that's something that uh, just happened yesterday, two days ago. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. So tell us a little bit, right, about you. Tell us a little bit about who you are as a player, those experiences you had um, at home, right? What made you into um, the player? And I must say one of my most favorite teammates, right, as well. Um, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, Daniel Guayva, originally uh, from London, uh, born there and grew up. Um, Again, obviously, like most people tell you in 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 the UK and in Europe, soccer is the uh, the number one sport. Um, you know, everybody plays it, and I was no different. Um, fell in love with it at a young age. Played um, what would be club ball um, from an early age, from the age of four or five, all the way up to about um, 11, 12, when I started to get um, looks from professional clubs. Um, I ended up going into uh, Fulham's uh, sort of centre of excellence to begin with, and then eventually the academy. Um, wasn't able to make the grade at Fulham, unfortunately. Um, so uh, I moved on to another professional team called Barnet, um, where I was able to play and do my study. So they were in a, a conference national at the time, and subsequently they got promoted into the football league. And they've really flip flopped from division to division in the last sort of three or four years. Um, I did did well there for two years, had a great time, and then I got an opportunity to go to Watford, who are in the Premier League right now. When when I was there. Um, uh, they were in the championship. A um, couple of players who people might know, Jay Demerit, who, who was captain of Vancouver Whitecaps, was there. He was very popular among the, the supporters there as well. Um, as a great guy and, and a person who really took his opportunities um, and, and, and played in the World Cup 2010 and, and did fantastic. He's a guy who came through the college soccer ranks. He played at University of Chicago, Illinois, I believe. Um, you know, and I, When I was there, I, I leaned on him um, because... When it became apparent that I wasn't going to be, my contract was not going to be needed at Watford. Um, I had a, um, a gentleman there, my coach at University of Buffalo, uh, John Asadillo, was there, um, sort of sh sharking around the, the waters, so to speak, about guys who might be released. And he sort of yeah, brought me aside and, and um, talked to me about potentially coming to the University of Buffalo. Um, a, a player has actually gone a prior year, who I unfortunately I didn't, I didn't know at the time, but I had gone there and I was able to sort of reach out to him. Um, and then when my um, when my contract didn't get renewed at the end of the year in 2005, um, you know, I sat down with my father and said, well, what's the best option? So I did have a couple of opportunities on the table to go to professional clubs at the lower division or go and take this opportunity at SUNY Buffalo, which was um, which was fantastic. It was in a time when I'm, I was fortunate to get a full ride, so I didn't have to pay anything. And my father was a big proponent of education as well. So the more we delved into it... Um, the more it just seemed like a really good opportunity and literally I packed my bags and went um, and it was, a, ch it was a, ch a change for the first two or three weeks. You know, you're in pre-season, it's a big school, uh, Buffalo. Um, you know, it's a ghost town, obviously, because it's pre-season as well. So it was difficult. Um, wasn't able to, you know, I was used to having my car and my independence and, you know, money in my pocket and it was a complete uh, lifestyle change when I went there. But um, I was really well looked after by the coaching staff and I had three seniors there as well who were the captains who really took me under their wing who were fantastic and um, you know once school started as well I, um, I really got into the swing of things and I had four great years there um, wouldn't change it for anything we were very successful um, obviously we had Akron in our conference who we all know is like a, a college power and they were at the time um, you know they had, I think they had you know, Darling and Nagby in the ranks they had um, Till Bunbury Kofi Sakodi um, you know, loads, fantastic uh, players in that team. And, you know, we just couldn't get over the hump. We played them a couple of times in the finals of the championship, just couldn't get over them. Um, but great four, four years of experience there. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, after that, I, I went back to UK um, to do my master's at Cambridge, um, played for their varsity team, got a varsity blue, which is a fantastic experience against Oxford. Um, played for a season um, in some semi professional ranks in the UK on the sixth step it would be um, there and then moved back to the US because um, I was I got married to my wife and I started playing for the Long Island Rough Riders and the New York Greek Americans and had a great time there playing with them been very successful you know with the Greeks we won a national championship which was fantastic and with the Rough Riders we were always very successful you know getting to the postseason and doing one the, the Open Cup which was great um, 
so that that's my my playing story so far. Probably got a couple more years left in the legs. Currently coaching the New York Rovers <laughs> in the LISL, which is great. You know, as I said, people, I remember being a, a young young player at Watford and speaking to a gentleman called Marcus Gale, who was a you know in um, Jamaican international, and he was. 36 at the time and I remember speaking to him in the in the locker room and him saying look just enjoy it as it goes quick and I was only 19 or 18 at the time and I was like yeah yeah whatever Marcus I've got ages and now I'm sitting here almost at his age I'm thinking it's gone like that so hopefully a couple more years in me um to play um from a coaching point of view um been coaching since about 16 um just off and on just doing little bits um my friend in the uk um owned a, co- a curve of coaching franchise which i so i used to dip in my toe in that and, and really enjoyed it um i've probably really got into sort of full-time coaching in an when i came to the states and with the rough riders being a player there it was just a natural transition to work with their youth and started doing stuff with their pre-academy um and and that and worked with deer park soccer club a, a few times which was which was great you know really really good club well run um and then my college um, coaching experience occurred when I got opportunities at uh, SUNY Maritime as an assistant. So I went in there in 2013 as an assistant under Martin Clays, um, who was great with me, really gave me a lot of rope to work with, um, gave me the ins and outs of a program. Um, and then he he left in 2014. So um, I was only there for a season as assistant and I was fortunate enough to be offered the full-time, uh, sorry, the, the, the head coach role there. So um, I took that in 2014. And I've been, I was there until just recently when I, I, I left to take the opportunity at, at the Merchant Marine Academy. Congratulations. Big move, right? Great yeah, it's program. Great, great school. Huge yeah, really. history. Huge history there. Yeah, absolutely. Really, uh, one of the um, five federal service academies. Great history, great people there. And, uh, and you know, um, people who serve their nation, you know, fantastic student athletes there. So tell us a little bit about uh, Kings Point Merchant Marine, right? Uh, Division three, Skyline Conference. Tell us about the school. Tell us about how um, you want to recruit players you're looking for, the type, the academics, the style, the character. Let's dive into that a little bit. Yeah, so Merchant Marine, just as I alluded to earlier, is the is one of the five um, federal service academies. You've got Army, Navy, uh, Coast Guard, Air Force, and the United States Merchant Marine Academy. Um, the uh, in, student population is around about a thousand, give or take. Um, it's located at Kings Point on the North Shore of Long Island. Um, excellent academic institution, um, you know, really, really high regarded, and, and hence that's that's reflected in the um, starting salary post graduation. Um, you know, there is obviously coming into a federal service academy, there's an obligation to um, you know fill the requirements of service. Um, the good thing about Kings Point is a little bit unique. Is if you went into the Navy, you'd have to go into the Navy. If you went to Army, you'd obviously have to go into. Or sorry, if you went to West Point, you'd have to go into the Army. Um, at, at Kings Point, you have the option to go into all three branches, which is great. Or you can choose to go into a civilian, uh, uh, but you must uh, maintain your Coast Guard license and 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 uh, res- uh, naval reservist. So there's a lot of different options. It's it's not go in, serve, you know, you have a little bit of a different flavor once you graduate, which is good. I think that gives um, the boys and, 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 the, and the girls who attend, um, you know, the academy, the, the, the options to, to uh, try different things, which is great. Um, the programs there, you know, obviously weighted towards like the, the, the maritime industry, engineering and, and logistics and, and the, the business side of it. Um, you know, obviously vigorous um, academic program um, from an SAT and a, and a GPA point of view. It's extremely competitive. You're probably looking at absolute minimum SAT of 1280, I'd say, 1250, about a stretch. GPA, we're looking at 3.4, 3.5 out of four um, sort of metrics. And, you know, they, they're going to want to see, you know, classes that have pushed yourself, you know, so AP classes and classes in the sort of STEM STEM area, which is which is critical because when you do come onto campus, those are the classes that you're going to be looking to take. Um, from a recruiting point of view, it's national and international. So the, the good thing about it is... Um, it's a free education, so you play no, uh, no nothing for your tuition or room or board. Um, you know, it's it, everything's taken care of by the academy, which is fantastic. So you get to go there for four years and come out with zero debt. And as I said, you know, the, the employment opportunities are plentiful, and the starting salary is is you know excellent there. Um, and I think that the um, the the players that we're looking for. Obviously, service is, a, is an important thing. You know, we're coming here. We want guys who are, you know, team players and, you know, are going to work hard, you know, on and off the field, um, you know, going to understand the mission of the the, uh, the institution and what it stands for. Um, but like I said, from a recruiting point of view, it's, it's national and international. You know, we're looking from people... 
uh, up from Maine down to Florida, down to you know Washington, down to California, you know, and and in between, it's it's everywhere. We can go any any state um, to to uh, take players, and then obviously we're all aware that the United States has um, many military bases around the world, and you know people there who have got some um, you know an American um, mother or father there who may be serving. They've got the opportunity to come there for free as well. Um, that doesn't rule out international students as well. We are able to uh, take uh, international students, um, and the fees there are very reasonable. Um, it's about ten thousand dollars all in, um, which in this day and age to get that sort of education is fantastic. Again, there are requirements from an academic point of view and from a, you know being able to speak the English language. Um, but you know it, it's, it offers a fantastic platform for yourself to you know develop your leadership skills, your your academic prowess, um, and then play high level championship. Division Free Soccer. Well, that's. I know when we spoke yesterday, um, I, I was not aware of the international piece. Um, and then I know that it's a big push to pull kids from all parts of our, of our country, right, to try and have inclusion in all states. Um, so, again, once again, I know you're very excited. Um, they're getting a great coach, uh, and there's huge history there. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Um, look, leave us off with um, a piece of advice, right? Through your time, um, both coming over. Uh, I know you dipped into a little bit about those changes from a, from a social aspect, right? An independent sign. To give us a little bit of piece of advice that you'd want to give to somebody that's listening, uh, whether it's, again, directly for uh, Kings Point, or maybe it's just an overall piece of advice. I know you you obviously do a lot of coaching as well on, in the youth level here. You've had some very, very good players and good teams and players that have gone on to some, some good places and played after you as well. So what could you leave us with? Yeah, definitely. I think the first thing, you know, and I, you know, as you said, I, I do coach the youth and I, I've currently got um, Massapequa, um, U18 team so they're in their final site their high school seniors so they'll be moving on and you know a lot of, majority of 90% of them are going to play college soccer which is great um, the one thing I always said you know I, I took these these boys when they're U15 and I spoke to the parents and I spoke to the boys said the one thing that you you have to realize when you are going to play college soccer is that you must um, you must go to the school where you could see yourself if college soccer wasn't there if that makes sense so if I, if you were at the school and there was no college soccer, would you be happy there? Does it have your major? Does it, does it um, tick the boxes in terms of, you know, campus? You know, is it an, an urban campus, a suburban campus? Are there big classes? Are there small classes? Everybody's got a different flavor of what they're looking for and how they learn and how they um, want to interact with professors and that. Do they want large lecture halls or small, small classes? So I'd always say that's the first port of call. You know, obviously find an institution um, that has your major that you want to pursue. Now that can be difficult sometimes because obviously some people don't they don't really know what they want to do and they want to dip their toes in different general classes just to understand. But I think at least have an idea of what classes that you enjoy in high school and then sort of tailor that towards your selection for schools that you could see when you go to higher education. So that'd be my first point of uh, that I'd make that find schools that really um, you know that really sync up with with what you want to pursue uh, at the school and in post graduation. That'd be that'd be critical um, from a um, college soccer point of view obviously I, I'd always encourage people if you know to, to play sports in general in college you know I had the benefit of playing there um, at, at SUNY Buffalo and had a wonderful wonderful time there and a wonderful experience and something that I look back fondly um, all the time whether it's um, you know just looking at pictures or just little little bits of things that jog your memory and you have a little smile on that so um, I'd always encourage that because of the the, the, the memories you make but from that, you have to, you know, understand what the program is, the program history. Obviously, there's a little bit different requirements from a Division One to Division Three um, in terms of, um, you know, expectations. You know, normally Division One's probably going to have a little bit more travel than a Division Three, but that might not be the case. You know, look at someone like NYU and their conference. Um, you know, they're flying all over the country to play. Um, so again, that's sort of a little different, different thing to think about. Um, but I think the, the main, the main thing is, is, is you know, you have to visit the campus to understand it and, and to speak to the coach and understand what his his philosophy is for the program, um, how they want to play um, and and where where they go and what direction they want to go in. Because, 
you're going to spend a lot of time with them people um, and you need to be comfortable with them. Um, you know, it's no good if, if um, you go there and, and, and you don't you know, enjoy, um, you know, at, at least a good working relationship because otherwise it's going to be miserable. So I think you have to do due diligence. You have to do your homework, speak to players in the program who've gone through the program, people who are, have played against that team as well. I think that's important to understand what they're like. Um, and then really just sort of sync up everything, you know, the school side from academic piece and then from the athletic piece and, and put them together and say, does it make, does it, do I feel good attending this institution? I think those are the, the key points that I always make to the, the youth players that I coach. And that's the advice that I would give to the people on this, um, this webinar. Yeah, no, well, look, well said. I think it's, uh, it's points, I think, across all aspects, right? So I think Absolutely. that's, uh, I think that's fantastic. Dan. Thanks for being a part of this. Congratulations. Um, look forward to seeing you real soon. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Appreciate everything you do. Um, you know, I, I know you, you go above and beyond for the kids. So you've worked with a couple of my players and, and really help them out. Um, so like I said, you know, um, hopefully you can help me out as well. I'm looking for uh, quality players all around. So anything you can get, help me with, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be open to. You bet, pal. I'll see you real soon. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Ciao.